In principle, those are all the fiber structures I'm going to show you and all the ones the book talk about. There are a few other structures though that are not necessarily fibrous proteins, but I think it's worth mentioning them in this part of the class at least. So what you have here is a simulation a colleague of ours, Roland Schultz and Jeremy Smith did at Oak Ridge almost a decade ago. The blue part here is actually no protein at all. This is cellulose and this is, it was a gigantic system. I think they had 150 million atoms in the simulation. It's Titan, one of the world's largest supercomputers. That's why they could do it. But cellulose is exceptionally important, in particular in Sweden. It's a very large part of Sweden's export and our wealth uh, is simply due to exporting pulp. Uh, pulp, wood, fiber, anything, you name it. The only problem is that there is not so much money to be made just by exporting wood or low quality papers in newspaper. What you ideally want to do is add know-how to this. You would like to export higher quality paper, higher quality wood, because that means that you can charge more for it and long term most Western countries there is no way you could compete purely on salary, right? You want to be able to add some value. There has been a remarkable development to this part of industry. Uh, Given this 10 or 15 years, I think we're increasingly going to be using fibers that you think of wood as cardboard for building, say, short-term shelters. We're going to use more packaging. We can make this resistant to water. You can certainly make it resistant to water by adding plastic or something on it. But what if you could make things resistant to water but doing it biocompatible? Because we also don't want to hurt the environment. Second, what if you could create things that have specially long fibers so that they don't basically so that, uh, that you get a nicer and cleaner and smoother surface or what if you could make paper that is stronger what if you could make cardboard that is stronger so you don't need so much cardboard in the product all these things can be done by either adjusting the fibers when you're producing them uh, orienting the fibers better or possibly by adding surface coatings and in this case it's a system with both cellulose and lignin, which would be the small components you have in tree. And we are increasingly starting to use proteins. Maybe you could add a particular protein to create, say, a super hydrophobic coating on uh, the cellulose so that you can't really wet the paper anymore. And then you would create one of these systems where it's basically paper, but it's paper that would be able to withstand rain. So again, the cellulose itself here is not a protein, but it's a very active area of biotechnology where you need to think both about physics but also the biological production of the proteins here. I bet you're gonna see more of it.